Amen? Amen. I want to thank uh, Sister Sonny Baptiste, um, who is also my mother. You know, I have a lot of mothers and aunties in this church, and I praise God for that. Amen? I don't know about you, but I have a lot of mothers who take care of me and a lot of aunties. So if you haven't found an auntie or a mother in the church, keep looking. Uh, so it is a privilege for me to be here uh, this morning. Um, I don't like being up here, but Fuelnik always putting me on the spot. So I want to uh, thank Fuelnik uh, for always, you know, trying to make me be an example for the kids. We know that we always encourage the kids, uh, the young people, to come here and preach. Uh, but us as leaders, um, my two assistant secret, uh, um, directors, Auntie Gina and uh, Sister Jerushka, you know, I'm always telling them to preach, but I have to do it myself because you have to be in the example when you're a leader. Um, so today, we know we only have 15 minutes. We only have 15 minutes, so we are going to uh, turn our Bibles um, into uh, Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. I asked everybody to get the Bibles, you know, the physical Bibles, open them in Mark 4, verses 35 to 41. And I'm going to read it for you. You can also read with me along um, as, we are, as I'm reading. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side, and leaving the crowd behind. They took him with them, and the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat. So that boat was already being swamped, but he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him, and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with the great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The sermon for today is entitled, Why Are You Afraid? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for allowing us to be here right now. Your children need a message today. They need a word from you. I know that I'm not perfect, so I ask you, Father God, to please speak through me so each and every one of your children can get something out of today's sermon. Just in my prayer, amen. Why are you afraid, church? So, in the last few years, if we want to be uh, very recent, we can start with 2019, when COVID hit. Since then, we see that there's, there's a lot of fear in this world. I know that before, people used to be afraid of a lot of things. We are afraid of dying. Uh, we are afraid of diseases and stuff. We are afraid of failure. We are afraid of a lot of things, but these past couple of years have been different. And if you want to testify, you can have a lot of things to say today. And I can tell you that if we are alive today in 2021, it's because of God's grace. Because a lot of people didn't think they were going to make it. A lot of people got sick. Others who did not catch COVID, they were scared that they might, they might catch it. And certain people didn't even want to come to the church when we opened up because with everybody being here, there was a chance that you could catch that virus. As human beings, it's okay to be afraid. And, and these verses that we just read, this is the same thing that was happening when Jesus said to the disciples, let's go on the other side. And 
based on what we read, after Jesus told them that we are going to the other side, as they were on their way, a storm came. Now, I want to tell you that sometimes in life, you might be going through something. It might be a disease that you have, or you have problems in your family. Or maybe for the young people, it might be depression, stress. It might be uh, the fear of failing, maybe in school. You want to make your parents proud. You, you want to make the church proud. You want to make everybody around you proud. So sometimes when you feel like you are shifting to the other way, you're going somewhere else, you're not going to the direction where you're supposed to go, you get scared. You fear. So when these times come, you might think that it just happened randomly. But I want to tell you that sometimes Jesus is testing you. And I want to tell you that right there, when Jesus was in the boat with, those, with the disciples, this was a test. And now you are asking me, how do you know that Jesus was testing his disciples? Well, let's see this. So the day started with Jesus back in Mark 3, chapter 3, verse 20, when he had a confrontation with some Pharisees. And we know that the Pharisees, they did not like Jesus' teaching. And they were always uh, uh, trying to come at Jesus. They were always trying to attack Jesus. So the Pharisees came and they were saying a lot of things to Jesus. They were saying that, Jesus, what's going on with you? Why are you performing miracles saying that you are doing them in the name of God? So to the Pharisees, so Jesus was taking God's name in vain. And they also accused them of blasphemy, which was punishable by death at the time when you blaspheme the name of God. You know, they, they took God so seriously, not knowing that Jesus was the Son of God at the time. This was a fierce and adrenaline pumping confrontation for Jesus. So Jesus was already tired with the Pharisees. And then Jesus continued to teach the crowd about God, telling them, how God is a great God, and what are the things that they can accomplish? What are the things that they get when they decide to follow Christ? Then Jesus' brothers came to see him and tried to take him away because they thought he had lost his mind. Now you have family tension. You have the Pharisees coming at you. But Jesus did not, did not give up. He still, he continued to, to preach. He spent the rest of the day teaching these disciples. He taught them about the parable of the farmer scattering seed, parable of lamp, parable of growing seed, parable of mustard seed, and a lot of others. So he continued to, to teach them about all this parable throughout the day under the heat of the sun, plus everything else that I just said that had happened to him during, during the day. So after a busy day, so Jesus Christ, he decided to test his disciples because his disciples were his, not only his, to, to him they were like children, but also they were his students. So Jesus was the teacher. And young people, when we go to school, after the teacher done explaining you so many things, after uh, the teacher is done uh, giving you uh, all this knowledge, he wants to test your knowledge. He wants to see how much did you retain. So Jesus was trying to see how much did the, the disciples retain. And I want to tell you today that sometimes, brothers and sisters, sometimes, Mother Olivier, after hearing so many sermons in the church, after hearing First Anna preach, after hearing uh, uh, Elder Charité preach, after hearing uh, uh, Elder Tutu preach, Jesus think that you should go to a test. Jesus wants to know how much did you retain from everything that you've gotten from these people. Because you come to church to listen. You come to church to hear the word of God, but Jesus wants to know how much do you know. So he tests you. 
So sometimes uh, you are facing these challenges. Sometimes there are certain things that come in front of you and you don't know where they come from. And sometimes things just come randomly. You get sick, your kids get sick, and you don't know what's going on. Instead of being afraid, I am telling you to be still because it might be a test. We saw there Jesus is testing the disciples. But to them, they thought that Jesus was just chilling. Jesus was sleeping. They forgot that Jesus is God. They forgot that Jesus knows everything. So Jesus was sleeping, but Jesus was aware of what, of what, was, what was happening around them. But to them, they didn't think that Jesus knew that there was a storm. So they got mad at Jesus, and they went and woke him up. And from what we just read, I don't think they just like, you know, did a little like call, oh, hey, Jesus. No, they were mad. They were very mad because they thought there was no hope. Now, I want you to think that about that. These disciples... They weren't like just random people who did not know anything about uh, being on a boat. Don't forget, some of them, they were fishermen, right? So they knew how to handle certain things. But this storm was different. Sometimes in life, we get certain things that come at us. Even though we know uh, we've been through certain things before, maybe, maybe uh, we've been sick before in the past. Maybe we are doctors, um, medic we work in the medical field, we know how to make tea because we are Haitian, but certain things we cannot do ourselves. It's different. We have to go to God. Certain things in your life, brothers and sisters, when they come, don't try to do it by yourself. Don't go and complain all, all over the place. Don't go in and ask your, uh, uh, your sister or your family members. Don't go and complain to them because guess what? Although they are your family, although the church people, they, they were supposed, they're supposed to be your, your brothers and sisters. But guess what? When you tell them things, they go and say it to somebody else. That's why you have to come to Jesus because he's not going to go and tell people about your business. He's not going to tell people about your business. That's why he is your best bet in a situation like this. So the disciples, they got mad. They were afraid because they forgot who Jesus was. And that happens to us all the time. Sometimes we are facing certain things and they are so absurd we are facing certain things that they are so cool. For a moment, we let fear take over, and then we forget who Jesus is. Although Jesus has done so many things in our lives already, so he's, he doesn't have nothing to prove to us because he has done so much. Things that we can testify, we can go and give our testimonies, but guess what? We are in a difficult situation. We let fear entered our mind in our thoughts and we just forget about him and that's when some people go to witchcraft that's when other people just go and start start being an alcoholic they start drinking because they start smoking because there's so much stress there's so much going on they feel like alcohol can help them better than jesus they feel like going to the witchcraft can give them a better solution instead of focusing on god at this time, the disciples, they didn't have any witchcraft uh, uh, um, leader to go to. They didn't have anybody to call on. They remembered that Jesus is sleeping, and they called on him so he can do something for them. And guess what? Jesus came and said, be still. Jesus talked to the winds. Jesus talked to the storm. And at that present minute, the storm stopped. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what is the storm that you are going through. Maybe my storm is not your storm. You might be going to family issues. You might have uh, problems with, with, with your health. You might have problems paying the bills. Maybe you're having trouble at the house with your kids. 
Maybe you have uh, some kids that you don't know where they're at. Maybe young people, maybe you are going to a test in your life because you're in school and you don't know which direction to go. You're trying to please your parents, but it's so hard on you, so all this burden is on you, so you can't carry it alone. I want you to turn to Jesus. I'm an only child, so I feel like everything is on me because I have to make it. But sometimes I don't see the way. And I feel like maybe I'm going uh, to I'm gonna fail my parents because they don't have another child to count on. I'm the only one. So sometimes I feel afraid. Sometimes I get scared because I said, what if I don't make it? What if I don't, I don't turn out to be the person they want me to be? But I want to tell you that if you turn to Jesus, he has an answer for every problem. We know that we are going to storms, storms that are different, but there's one thing in common that we have in all those storms is that these storms are violent. My storm is my storm. Your storm is your storm. They don't look alike, but there's that one point in common. We know that they are violent. And if we don't deal with them, we might end up wherever. Who knows? Wherever. You might end up not coming to church anymore because you're not dealing with your storms. And my only advice for you today is that when the ocean rise, the thunders war, Jesus will take you above them. Les vagues yon monte, les gros problèmes yon vini, bon Dieu a fò passe en le tèt yo. The only thing I'm asking you to do is be still, know that he is God. May God bless you all.